Oh, thank you. Ooh, ooh I got stage hands. That's awesome. I feel so important. That's great. Thank you. All right. So we have a bit of time here to talk to Matt Mercer. Who would like to hear us talk to Matt Mercer? There we go. All right, Matt, come on up. Yay! Bye. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's fine. Oh, our afternoon. pleasure. Our pleasure entirely. How have you been enjoying Calgary so far? Oh, it's been great. Awesome. As a, as a California, Southern California native and a person that appreciates not super hot, glaring, destructive heat, uh, this has been perfect weather. You haven't been here in July. You haven't been to Southern California in July. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> No, but uh, no, we're, we're so glad to have you here, and uh, we actually have some time to uh, talk to you. For, and this is basically kind of like a Q&A panel. So uh, I do have some questions. The thing is, I didn't know how long I was going to have you. That's so. okay. We can vamp, my friend. Yeah, okay. Make stuff up. We're good. Yeah, we could. Uh, what games have you been playing lately? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, yeah, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire has consumed me for the past oh, week wow. and a half. Um, before that, I j Yeah! This is the person! <laughs> um, me and my wife just played through A Way Out recently. Ooh, okay, yeah. Which is an awesome, an awesome couples game, by the way. It's like a, it's a co-op narrative game where you play two guys who are in prison and you're trying to break out and help each other out. And it's split screen and it's really fun, actually. It's so like, there's like, there are multiple endings and stuff and you can fail. Can, can you fail? I, you can fail, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's probably not a game I should play with my girlfriend then. <laughs> For the uh, sake it, of my marriage. But that one's pretty cool. Um, um, Overwatch, I still play often as I can. Okay. Retrib Retribution event consumed a lot of my time. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? You're here. Everyone here is very happy you're here, so... I'm happy to be here. Exactly. All right, let's actually get started with, uh, with the sort of interview questions. Now, the thing is, I'm usually not a fan of typical interviews. You know, it's like, do, do you like being in video games? You know, that type of question, right? So we're, uh, I came up with a bunch, but there was a lot. So we're going to do a speed round, OK? OK. We're going to do a speed round. So uh, I ask you a question. You come up with the first answer that comes to your head. Oh, no. OK? <laughs> what is your favorite novel? Favorite novel? Yes. Uh, that would be House of Leaves. Ooh. That's the one where that's, it, it's all trippy. You have to like turn the book. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it's one of my favorite kind of like psychological horror novels out there. Highly recommended. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Lord of the Rings trilogy, if you consider that a movie. <laughs> What's your least favorite movie? Least favorite movie? <laughs> what, is, what is a crappy movie you've seen recently? Oh, man. Uh, the Last Witch Hunter? I don't think I, I don't think I've heard it's, of it. It's which a is... Vin Diesel movie. Oh. I like Vin, and I had a chance to play with him in D&D &D oh, to yeah, promote yeah. the movie. So you met, you met Vin Diesel? I, I did. I got to oh, Dungeon Master wow. for him. Wow. Okay, that's that, cool. That was crazy. Yeah. And like, when you meet somebody on that like, super level of stardom, yeah. there's like a 98% chance they're going to be a raging butthead. <laughs> but he wasn't. He was actually very, very nice. And we talked for like 20 minutes beforehand about just Dungeons and Dragons and his old character campaigns and everything. And I, it was really, really cool. Okay. But the movie was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't tell him that. No, no, it's fine. This isn't going on the internet, right? No, okay. <clears throat> Uh, your, do, 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 do you partake in the alcohols? Uh, not often. Oh, okay. But, I, but when I do partake, usually it's to a, 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 a memorable degree. Okay. <laughs> right. So you're a beer or, wine, beer or wine person? I'm a wine person if I'm going to pick awesome. between the two, okay. yeah. Mm. Be, beef the or chicken? The classiest of beers. Yeah. Beef or chicken? Uh, chicken. Okay. Sunny day or rainy day? Rainy day. Okay. All day. Your least favorite vegetable? All of them. <laughs> no, toma to well, technically tomatoes are fruit, so it doesn't really matter. Tomatoes suck. Tomatoes are all I mean, I like tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes being made into other things are fine. The transition helps, but just straight tomatoes? Nah. Yeah, I, nah, I never put tomatoes on burgers. They just get soggy. Yeah. Uh, cats or dogs? Uh, it's a hard choice. I like them both for different reasons. I'd probably have to go with uh, with cats because I don't <laughs> mainly because I'm a very busy person. Right. And uh, you know, dogs require a lot of attention. I don't want them to feel neglected. <laughs> but cats are like, whatever, man. I'll be over here. Yeah. 
someone like someone just once told me, you know, like a cat thinks it owns you versus a dog knows you own it. That's a good distinction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the autonomy of it. Okay, sorry. The question is about to get really weird. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You, I'm pretty weird. If you could eat any celebrity to gain their power, <laughs> who would you eat? Oh man. I would say if if Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Morgan Freeman is not fair, because that's like saying I ate God and I have all powers. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But it's a good answer for that same reason. Uh, I, would, I would probably say Chris Pratt, because I just want to be him. Yeah. yeah. I just want to be him. It's amazing. I <laughs> Finally, I die. this is obligatory. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? I think the one horse-sized duck. Because yeah. once you manage to, you know, combat it for about 30 minutes or so and you're both, like, gathering your power and taking a moment, you can ascertain where its weak point is and go right. for that you know, final strike. You can't do that a hundred times. They're eventually going to yeah, overrun but, I mean, you. Like, okay, I'm assuming, like, goslings, though, like, t like tiny little, or, like, little ducklings. Ah, swarms creep me out. Swarms, no? Okay, all right. All right. Cool. Uh, I just want to hear what a horse-sized duck sounds like. <laughs> like that's be a fun noise. That's close. You know, I, I have to ask you though. It's like, do, you know, you, with Kirk role being the way it is, and um, now, and with uh, you know, you you have had other roles other than Kirk role. Do you get recognized often? Yeah. 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 And is it, is it, is it getting to that point? Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's surreal. It, uh, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I weirdly, uh, I'm a somewhat private person in a lot of ways. Uh, though I put a lot of my life on the internet now, um, so it is kind of it's interesting to be in a space where after years and years of being anonymous, having people on the street come up to you at places you wouldn't expect and be like, "Excuse me, are you Matt Mercer?" And my first thought is like, "Oh God, I look a mess right now." <laughs> you know, I'm like in my pajamas, my hair is greasy, I'm getting groceries, and someone's like, can I get a picture? I'm like, oh, sure. <laughs> um, so that's, that's strange, but, but everyone, everyone who's ever done, right. you know, stopped me has been so cordial. It hasn't been like a, hey, you're that guy, take a picture with my kid. It hasn't been, <laughs> you know, everyone's been very respectful, so it, it's, it's been very sweet. No, that's good. Um, but I mean, you, you've been going to conventions a lot. Like, a like you know, you, obviously you walk into a convention, everyone's gonna like freak out right, at this point, but. It's getting a little hard to yeah, walk around, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so I've been doing some digging, and apparently you used to be a convention attendee, just like the rest of us. Oh yeah, no, my, I've, I've, I've gone uh, every year to Anime Expo since 1997. Wow. Um, yeah, guys. <laughs> I've been going to cons. Longer than some of you have been alive. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, no, I've 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 been an anime nerd my whole life. And true, so true con veteran. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm guessing that that's totally surreal for you to, to be on the other side of the curtain, the stage. Extremely. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I was I was the one spending hours in line to get into panels, you know, for different creators and and going and buying way too much imported merch from the convention hall and being like, well, I don't need to eat for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, to, to, to be on the other side, the transition has been very surreal. And like, I was heavily in the cosplay scene in the mid 2000s. Okay. That was like, well, since I went to my like, first con, I was like, people can dress up outside of Halloween? This is amazing. So yeah. it was an easy transition from there. So yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been pretty steeped in nerd culture. Steeped. Uh, okay. So. Lost my train of thought. Uh, when when you do go to a convention, though, right? Like, it, does it does it make you wish you were anonymous, though? Like, you know, that you could actually just wander the halls as an attendee again. I mean, occasionally, but I I've I've learned how to, or am learning how to find better ways to go incognito when I do mm -hmm. attend conventions. Like, I usually try and hit the dealers hall, and like, artist alley is a big thing for me because there's a lot of really talented. Uh, indie artists who are trying to, you know, get their work right. out there and do amazing work. And that's always been a special place in my heart. So I usually try and go to Artist Alley at every convention in some way, shape, or form. Um, but it is, it's becoming a, a challenging point. Yeah. Masks do help. Masks Those have been help. tremendous. Yeah. I'm, you, what's the craziest mask you've worn? To, like, because I'm you, not going to tell you because now you'll know where to yeah, find exactly, me at the convention. Right. <laughs> that's a terrible well, idea. You, you, I'm guessing you have, like, like, you know, you switch masks for every condo. 
right? I can, but that's a lot of masks. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you can kind of make a game out of it. I mean, like Adam Savage does his incognito thing. At Con oh, uh, that's been very much the inspiration to try and yeah, get around yeah. with these things. I mean, he's much more recognizable than I am, so he, I'm sure he has to deal with it a lot worse. But, um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you mentioned you, you've been going to AX since 97 then. That's, so you, do you have a favorite anime, like old school anime? Oh man, uh, Record of Lodos War is Ooh, one of my old school that favorites. That is old school, yeah. That's a good one. And if you haven't watched it, it holds up, y'all. I'm just saying. Uh, oh man, oh, there are so many great ones. I mean, the original Evangelion. Uh, yeah. And I actually really enjoyed End of Evangelion because it was such a violent FU to, the, to all the yeah, exactly. angry fanboys. Yeah. And I was like, man, balls on that creator for just telling his audience, deal with it. I thought that was kind of awesome. Good old Hideki Yano. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy. Uh, yeah, no, it's, what do you think of a modern anime, though? Like, I mean, you're in the industry, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, but I mean, like, the, the direction that anime has taken, like, did do you, do you feel this, it's different from the 80s and the 90s and stuff? Or? Uh, in some ways. I mean, yeah. it's definitely become more widespread. So there's a lot right. more anime right. content out there. I mean, back, back in my day, uh, you know, there was like a handful of series that were really popular and present. Mm -hmm. So it was a very narrow scope comparatively, whereas now there's so much anime production out there right. that you can very easily find what your niche is, which is great, because as the community expands, you need kind of that breadth of content. Right. Um, and I feel like, you know, that there'll always be kind of the anime that you can feel are a little phoned in or the ones that are definitely just retreading old tropes. But there's still a lot of shows that come out that really kind of are unique and fresh. And, you know, I think it's, it's, a, good, it's a good tale for, for storytellers out there in that medium uh, in Japan and animated you know, stuff here in the U.S. that they're still coming up with very new uh, mm -hmm. ideas and worlds and characters. So I, I would say it's definitely different. Um, I've, I'm a pers personally have been a huge fan of, like, the Fate series. Ooh. Um, I, Fate Zero, which I had the chance to work on, is still one of my most proud projects. It's such an wow. incredible series. Um, so yeah, like there's still great stories being told. Mm -hmm. Is there any role that, or like you know, a project that you've done that you feel is underrated? And why isn't Titanfall two? <laughs> Play that game, people! Come on. Uh, project that I was that I worked on that feels underrated. Yeah, uh, yeah Masquerada. Uh, Masquerada is a, a, an isometric RPG uh, that I worked on. A, a great uh, development studio in Singapore mm -hmm. made the game, and it's it's a very kind of Renaissance fantasy feel to it. It's got a very deep storyline. The art is all hand drawn, two D animation wow. okay. over a three quarter view. It's beautiful. Um, and it's a great story. And because it was an indie game, I don't think it quite got the 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 attention that it deserved. So if you're ever looking for right. that sort of a story, I highly recommend it. Hmm. So, so, sorry, say that again? That was... Called, it's called Masquerada. Masquerada. Okay. Going on my, going on my Steam list, which it's, is... It's there. Check which it. is uh, miles long at this point. Of the <laughs> I feel you on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Let's play another game. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so obviously you are a dungeon master. Occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> And I feel that dungeon masters need to have very good improvisational skills. That does help, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I got a game where I will give you a situation, okay? And I will tell you whether or not I roll a 20 or a 1, and you will tell me what happens to me. Okay. <laughs> okay? I'm going to put you right on the spot. <clears throat> so actually, a lot of these are pretty mundane, okay. which, which I think is really funny. So... I am at the grocery store. I'm checking out my groceries, and I'm putting in the banana, a banana on the scale. I roll a one. What happens? As you reach from your grocery receptacle and lift the small yellow fruit within your grasp to place it upon the slow rolling track, your finger catches the edge, <laughs> and as it begins to grind your hand underneath the slow pulling track, the banana splits into four or five different pieces. You could almost hear it screaming as it, ah! You manage to withdraw your hand in time, only losing the edge of your fingernail. But that poor banana is mashed. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. You are fixing your car after a very long trip. Okay, you're fixing up, giving regular, regular maintenance, you know, pouring in your windshield fluid and all that. 
you roll a 20. What happens to the car? Go with me here. I'm not a car guy. <laughs> As you attach the pipe thing to the engine thing. <laughs> <laughs> And so at that point, you realize the alternator that you had previously ordered had some strange runic sigils on the side. <laughs> As they begin to hum and pulse with this undulating beat, the car begins to slowly shift and transform from your previous, uh, we'll say, Honda Accord. <laughs> <laughs> That's very mundane. Yeah. Yes. With a, a, a kind of a cobalt blue color goes to like a jet black Ferrari, extending. Uh, unfortunately, what you didn't realize is the back seat of the Ford of <laughs> is being crushed into the two-seater of the Ferrari, and all of your luggage has such been consumed and destroyed by the vehicle. However, you now have a Ferrari. <laughs> is, that, is that a 20? Yeah, that's a 20. Okay. In the long run, it's a 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, so, yeah, so when you DM them, when, when someone rolls a natural 20, you always try to add, like, a bit of a downside to it, or is it always just like, this is fantastic, everything's amazing? No, but... I just also roll with the logistics of the scenario. Oh, okay. And you go from a, from a four-seater to a two-seater, like, something's probably going to go. Okay, all right. Something, <laughs> something's got to give. <clears throat> all right, you are... <laughs> it's her wedding day. You are walking down the aisle. Okay. Uh, you see your bride at the altar, and suddenly you roll a zero. Or a one. What? On your roll a zero, that's real bad. Yeah. <laughs> you roll a one. You roll a one on your way to the altar. What happens? Oh, man. <laughs> I've had this nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so have I. As you begin to look around and see all of your family and friends before you, that moment of attention manages to miss what appears to be a small glass container with a candle used to line the walkway. Your oh, foot boy. hits it. And as it does, the glass container flips into the sky, whoo, whoo, shattering onto the ground. Somehow, in this moment, you didn't realize that the grass on the lawn leading to the front of the altar had been creating some sort of a strange flammable gas in the air. <laughs> the flame catches it, and whoo, the entire altar is in flames. Suddenly, your wife is Sephiroth against the back of Nibelheim. <laughs> and all you can say is, I'm sorry. That exact neighbor? She turned into Sephiroth. Uh, metaphorically. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares about that now. Wow. Okay. You are couch diving, looking for loose change. You stick your arm into the couch. 20. As your hand delves deeper between the rather, we'll say, crusty <laughs> couch where, cushions. Where are we going with this, Matt? Look, man, I was, I was young in an apartment. You spilled cream cheese. It's going to problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, and your hand suddenly touches something cold and smooth. And as your fingers kind of caress the exterior of this foreign object, it goes from a, a medium bulbous uh, kind of metallic exterior to a gradual pincher point. And you're worried that you may have discovered something that your neighbor shouldn't see. But then as you pluck the exterior of this object and pull it through the cushions you see before you, an unpolished but ancient brass lamp of some kind. Ooh. A slight voice seems to emanate from the interior. Rub me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You're, uh, you're in England. You're having a tour of Buckingham Palace. It's very nice, it's very, you know, regal. And all of a sudden, the queen appears. Okay? You roll a zero at that moment. Or a one at that moment. <laughs> I, am, I don't play d and &D. I'm so sorry, people. I know I should. You see the queen and you roll a one. All right. What you didn't know is that for weeks in preparation for this day, the queen has had a series of terrible night terrors involving this phantom foreigner with long brown hair <laughs> <laughs> who immediately assaults her with some sort of bladed weapon. As she turns and makes eye contact with you, you watch as her face, already pretty pale, goes paler. And she points and goes, cheese him! <laughs> At that point, the guards rush in your direction. 
you don't quite understand what to do, so you immediately jump for the nearest window, but you forget you're very high up in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> in the last moments of your life, entail the sound of, that was done! <laughs> no, I was expecting like a, like a pack of corgis to attack. <laughs> the Royal Corgi Army is a very dangerous <laughs> thing. <laughs> They're actually werewolves or something like that. Cool. That was amazing. Thank you for that. That was amazing. No That's worries. Awesome. Yeah. So be careful in your day-to-day -day mundane life. You, your wife may turn into Sephiroth as well. <laughs> hey, you know, some people <laughs> be like, hey, honey, could, could you put this costume on for me? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you always, uh, do you always like put yourself in a situation where you're trying to come up with a scenario like that? Uh, I don't have to, because every week I have to deal with these crazy players. Right, yeah. That do that for me. <laughs> if anything, I get to use the rest of the week to just cool down and not worry about it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when you're actually doing the show, though, right, and it's like completely unscripted and everything, right, there, there's almost no amount of planning that goes into this other than just, like... For my... Well, I, there's like, on your end, obviously. Yeah, on my end, there's planning. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's... I, I don't... I try my best to, to guess what the players are going to do based, based right, on the characters right. they made, but sometimes it gets in the ballpark, and more often than not, it veers strongly to one side or the other. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, I never know, and that's part of the thrill for me also. Yeah, okay. Yep. But, uh, but also, the, there'll be games that'll finish, and we'll get up from the table, and I'll be like, what the heck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Usually, like, Sam. Isn't that, infuri isn't that infuriating? That's infuriating. You send, you, you, like, because my girlfriend tried to DM one time, and uh, she was just continually frustrated at all of our attempts to like <laughs> completely subvert what she was like, what she was trying to do, right? So I mean, like, like, how do you deal with that frustration? Uh, <laughs> There's a few, few ways. It depends on, on, on how they're subverting it. If it's antagonistic, if it's like, I know you're trying to build a story, but we're having fun ruining it. That can be a little frustrating, right, at which right. point then you like talk with the players afterward and be like, hey guys, I'm really trying to do this for you. Work with me a little bit, yeah. you know. It's okay if you mess with me to a certain extent, but also be a little respectful that I put time into making this story for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mess with me, but play along. Uh, Don't munchkin, did, did I get that right? Munchkin? Mun Munchkining can be a thing, yeah, the okay, min-max yeah. min aspect of it. But if people want to play that kind of game, that's not a bad thing either. Yeah, yeah. Just talk with your players in advance and kind of make sure you're all on the same page on what kind of game you want to play. If you have one player that wants to just you know, kill monsters and take loot, and you have one player that wants to play a high level of political intrigue, and you have one player that wants to just go around boozing and whoring, you know, <laughs> you're gonna have a hard time making all those players happy. Right. So it's like, can we all agree to go for this sort of a theme, and can we all kind of meet in the middle, and then everybody enjoys themselves. Right, right. Um, so yeah, and it, other than that, just expect it to happen and try to roll with the punch as best you can. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's like the story of every DM's life. Oh yeah. yeah. And remember, some choices have consequences. So if a player really wants to subvert your story and the choices they make are really crazy, there's probably gonna be some crazy consequences for that too. And that's where the fun of the DM right, right. comes with comeuppance. Like, okay, you wanna ruin my story? Touche. <laughs> I'll ruin you. Rocks fall, everyone dies. Uh, so in Calgary, you, have, you, have you actually had a chance to go around and, and kind of experience Calgary? Uh, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, it's kind of a fly-in convention and fly-out scenario because my schedule is kind of crazy. Right, right, right. I did get a chance to go to the Twisted Element Bar last night. Ooh. Uh, with an amazing drag show. Mm -hmm. And if that's Calgary, I'm set. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, uh, the, we walked around the city for a bit, some amazing food, and like, I've, I've had a great time here. So I definitely, definitely want to try and come back and spend more time in the city and the uh, an opportunity to experience more of this place. All right. Do you have Timmy's? What? Do you have Timmy's? Tim Hortons. Oh, no, no. Uh, not here. I went to Halifax a few years ago and had okay. it there. And I was like, oh. It's donuts. It's donuts. It's donuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we feel, though, too. It's just a... <laughs> I was like, I just want to offend anybody, but I was like, yeah. I think, I think it, it's okay. uh, the, the time of Tim Hortons as a national pride is kind of passed. That's what I've heard. I heard it was yeah. like really great and there was like a changeover in how they did the donuts and it was like, ah, oh, it's not the same. It's not the same. I'm sorry, it's guys. <laughs> it happens. Anywhere else in uh, Canada that you're lined up to go pretty soon? Or? Not yet, but I, okay. I, this is like, when I was in Halifax, it was a very small thing and right. you know, it's, from what I've heard, it's Halifax. Uh, <laughs> so like, this is my first real like, kind of 
you know, dive into Canada, and I'd oh, want to go okay. back, definitely. All right. Uh, what about uh, poutine? Did you try poutine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What'd you think? Well, it's amazing. It's okay. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I've had, like, American poutine, and then, like, oh, this is pretty good. Not the same. The cheese, the cheese must squeak. Yeah. It must squeak. Which is great, because it's almost like it's almost like something crying out for help in its final moments. <laughs> it's like, next! That's my opinion. You take a bite of poutine, you roll a one. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> As your teeth clamp down on the tiny, somewhat gelatinous, dairy-like substance, the squeak suddenly turns into a roar. <laughs> and you realize that wasn't a piece of cheese, but that is one of the children of the great cheese god, Morad. <laughs> As you look over your shoulder, your jaw slackens, and the small piece of mildly crushed cheese tumbles out of your mouth. As you see the gargantuan, white, gravy-covered mother rocketing towards you with bared fangs and claw. I'm going to have nightmares about poutine monsters eating me now. Thanks. Happy to oblige. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, let's play another game. All right. I'm going to give you a bunch of Canadian, Canadiana, like, trivia, and you have to guess whether or not it is true or not. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. Up until a couple of years ago, about... I believe it was 2015, dueling in Canada was illegal. As of 2015, it is now legal. True or false? I want it to be true. It is true. Yes! <laughs> and who tried to answer for me? It's legal now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Canada got its idea for plastic money from Australia. True or false? I'm gonna say false. It's true. It's true. Thanks, Australia. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you like felt the plastic money? Oh yeah. Well, uh, it's funny in a truly American way. I've yeah. been around, or not, not me, American, but like America in its own mm -hmm. country. I've been to Europe. I've been all through Southeast Asia. I've been to Australia, New Zealand, and everywhere has like colorful plastic money. Mm -hmm. And America's like, no! We're all gonna be different with less interesting money. It's gonna be green with, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really sad, I always go to foreign countries, I'm like, right. your money's so cool, ours is so lame. Yeah, I, that's, whenever I go to the States, I'm always like, oh, wait. Like, double, have to like double back and like count and stuff, right, so. Yeah, it's problematic. Yeah, okay, uh, in Canada, the pretty much Canadian symbol of uh, the, our, na or na one of our national animals, the Canada geese, or Canada goose. It has a reputation for being vicious and violent. True or false? Very true. Yeah, okay, yeah, you know. That's geese universally, by the way. <laughs> They're just a, a threat. If you hear one hissing, you run. <laughs> they, they hiss. I've, I've come across a geese at a pond by my old apartment years ago, and I think it was, it was around the season where they were having children. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, cool, it's a goose. And then, like, its head turned at that moment to lock on me. And I was like, why, why is my fight or flight kicking in? <laughs> and sure enough, that <sighs> started kicking in. I was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and that was a much smaller one than what you guys have here. You guys have like mutant geese. Yeah, they're like freaking crazy. like up to here. At yeah. Least. Yeah, it, yeah, it like is. a rampage seizure. They would make a good, uh, good enemy in a campaign, I'd say. <laughs> like a giant goose, yeah. Canadian goose. DC 25. <laughs> okay. Uh, ginger beef is not actually Chinese, but it is Canadian. True or false? We're on a, we're on a, a, a stint here of, of trues, so I think you try and throw me off. So psychologically, I'll say true again. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was actually invented here in Calgary, so. Nice. Cool. All right. Uh, How's our time? Let's see. It's all 50. I got 10 minutes with you. You got time, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> does that ever, I'm just always wondering, does that ever get annoying when people request you to do, do like voice work? Like, like, like a, say a line or whatever? Does that ever get annoying? 
Uh, no, it, 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 does, it doesn't get annoying if it's done in a respectful way. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, if they're like, could you, you know, it's possible to hear you say this, like yeah, yeah. passing in the hall, you know. With, with, for signing lines, you know, it's difficult there because there's, there's a time constraint. Right, 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 exactly. Possible, so not in those scenarios. But like, I'll meet people in public and it's like, can I, can I get you to do this video real fast? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm happy to if you're respectful. Yeah. But if you get people like, well, you're the guy, say the thing. <laughs> That's when it gets a little like dance monkey and you're like, eh, Yeah, no, exactly. Oh. Well, you did come in at noon, uh, like for the Overwatch tournament. Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> That's such a wasted opportunity. Yeah, just saying. I am ashamed. I am so genuinely sorry, all of you, <laughs> especially the McCrees I see in the audience. I am so sorry. Well, I, I might as well do it now. Let's try and make it well, up to you. you. Get, get your phones out, people. You know what time it is. It's high noon. Yeah, it's a lot better than my Italian accent, I'll tell you that. <laughs> How, so, where, where do you get the accents from? It's like, like voice acting, obviously, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very physical thing, right? Like, is there any tips you can give people on how to like, get master like, accents, for instance? Like, when I try to, try to imitate an accent or something, it's always really tough. Like, I can't do a Texan accent at all. A accents are, there, there's different ways of, of training in it. There is the, the classical way, which is learning what's called the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's an actual broken down alphabet of sounds and, and, and speech patterns that you, that any accent can be learned once you learn the alphabet and see how it's broken down. Right. Uh, but that's like a college course level, like learning a new language almost. But it's very handy in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're more of a, a listen and repeat, learn just you know, through audio experiences and practice, which is my method, right. uh, just listening, watching a lot of content where these accents are displayed in. There's a wonderful website called The Idea or the International Dialects of English Archive. And it has just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of audio files mm. of people all over the world uh, and all of their regional dialects and accents reading okay. English. And so it's just a great resource to listen and learn these different uh, accents. And then from there, it's just practice. Yeah, my girlfriend's a linguist, actually. She would be really interested in that. So. Yeah, have her check that out. It's actually yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, so... <clears throat> So when you're at when you're at home, for instance, like are you are you still like training or like? Always, I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> it's it's you know part of, part of the thing yeah. of being uh, an actor of any kind, but a voice actor is you're always having to learn how to expand your uh, your skill set and how to just keep your muscle going. You know, it, it is something that you have to work to keep to keep right. sharp and, and going. So. Whenever I'm alone in the car, alone in the shower, alone in just anywhere, I'm usually in some way, shape, or form trying out different voices and sounds. You know, like what would it sound like if I mixed these two characters I've already done? You know, if I had if I had like a low kind of guttural, you know, growly voice. Mm -hmm. What if I mixed it with like a little more of a a, a, a pinched back throat? And suddenly, this low growly voice gets back here. You know, so like you 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 mix elements and find right. weird new avenues there. Uh, so I'm often talking to myself in my car. Oh, okay. So, so people look at you weird? All the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> my, my wife used to make fun of me years ago. Yeah. She'd like hear me talking to myself. Then she'd be like, Did you say something? No, I'm just talking to myself. Okay. And then when she began to get more voiceover work and she started doing it, I was like, ha ha ha! <laughs> now you can fun of me now, are you? It's like a million things going on in your head then. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it basically, it's, it's like controlled crazy. Uh, it, you know, it's, it, for me, growing up with voices in my head, now I have a place to put it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> channel it. It's good. You hear that, kids? Talk to yourself. You'll become a voice actor. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we have five minutes left, I believe. Do we... Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, one last question. So, so you mentioned that you can kind of, like, mix and match voices. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a really, really, really weird one for you. Okay. If McCree was British... <laughs> if McCree, let's see here. If McCree was British, he would be somewhere around this realm. Please understand. Follow me this way. It's, it's, it's sort of a. He sounds merely almost like a, a Shakespearean villain this way. My, it's this is. My head is like. <laughs> it's high noon. <laughs> All right, 
I think that's about as much time as we have. <laughs> Everybody, give it up for Matt Mercer. Thank you, guys. All right, and uh, thank you for coming to Odafest. Thank you for having me, buddy. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, everybody, Matt Mercer.